Gibbons. <laughs> Got a fun video for you here today. I'm going to show you a bunch of software that I used to make the theme song for my Beats and Chats show. Now, if you haven't seen Beats and Chats yet, make sure you go watch the first two episodes. That's all I've got so far. I've got more coming up, some really exciting guests in the works. And the first two guests that I had were Knox Squared and Sanjay C, two incredible humans that kind of need no introduction on a music making YouTube channel. We had an incredible time chatting about them and really digging into the behind the scenes of these people because you don't really get to know about people like us when we're sitting in front of the camera showing you something else all the time. So go watch those shows and now let's talk about the theme. I knew I wanted something kind of retro, old school. If you watch the beginning of it, you'll see it's pretty goofy. I knew I needed something kind of retro and cheese ball, so I went for that Price is Right kind of sound. And But what software did I use for this theme? We're going to go over all of that. I've got a couple of libraries I've never shown on my channel and they are fantastic. So most of the stuff I'm showing you is stuff that I've purchased myself, so this isn't a sponsored video or anything like that. But I do have a couple things in here that were given to me for free for videos, and uh, those are things like Noir and Crate Cuts, and then just Cubase itself. So let's get into the software, see what it's all about, and show you how I went about making this fun little theme song. First and most important for me was this Swing More library from Project Sam. So Swing More comes out, I saw this library come out a few years ago, and I needed it for uh, a video that I was doing the soundtrack for. So I picked that up right away and used it. And I think I made the soundtrack the same day that I bought the software. It was just that fast and easy for me to get an incredible sound. So let me show you a couple of things from Swing More here. I won't make this an entire Swing More video. If you want to see an entire Swing More video, I'd love to do a tutorial on using this software. But I'm just going to show you how I used it in my project here. And the reason I love it so much is because they've got all these weird little articulations and falls and stuff like that. And the voicings of the section are incredible. So we got this beats and chats thing. I knew I needed these big chords right at the beginning. So I started off with the full big band chords patch in Swing More. So if we go up to the very top, we can see big band chords, and you can see full big band chords and then trombone chords. We've got a trombone right here in the studio, which I sort of honk away on every day a little bit, but I'm still really bad at it. So the way this one works, if you load it up in complete control, which I've got right here, it loads up really nicely. They've got it set up to work perfectly in complete control. Nice little layout. You just have to take my word for it. At the bottom, of course, with the lights, we've got showing us all of the different uh, articulations and stuff like that. So, so let's just pull up our, our keyboard down at the bottom so you can see what I'm seeing down here. So the way this full big band chords works is you choose your root key that you want down at the bottom. So I've got C all the way up to a B. And then you choose the chord flavor that you want. And so we can choose everything from major chords, six chords, minor chords, minor major seven chords, major seven chords, diminished sevens, dominant sevenths, and then just regular minor and augmented diminished chords. So a whole bunch of different chord qualities that we can choose and then a whole bunch of different voicings of those same chords. Up at the top, we see the root, and then we can see the next set of lights is going to give me the different chord qualities. So we start with a, a major six chord. Oh man, that's one of my favorite chords. That's like the end of every you know Mills Brothers song or or any kind of old jazz songs in the in the fifties and some in the sixties, maybe back to the forties, really. We got a major seven, major seven with a nine and a 13 in there. So these are chord qualities. I need to do a video on chord qualities. I will do one very soon. And, and how, especially how they relate to something like machine, because you can see a lot of these chords in, uh, in the chord modes in machine. Anyways, D minor six. Minor six chords are such a beautiful, beautiful chord. It's like a, it's like a regular minor chord, but then it's got this extra note, the six. Let's go to the vibes which is the six here, you know, isn't in the key of D minor. So if you were getting really technical and you, and you look at a minor six chord, what's happening is it's, if you, if you were to choose that as the root, that would be kind of like pulling from the Dorian mode. But again, that's getting too much music theory for this video, but isn't that beautiful? Wow. Okay, so let's go back to the chords. We got the minor six, major, minor, major seven, major seven. We got dominant chord. And then we got the dominant chord with a sharp 11, sometimes called a flat five. Oh, 
Uh, it's just beautiful stuff there. Minor seven, B diminished seven, they're calling it the altar chord. All right, D major, D minor, D augmented, and D diminished. So much more simple chords at the top. So you've got all of these different chords to choose from, and then it gets even better because they've got different voicings of them. So I'd have to bump up an octave here to really hear this, but now that I've chosen my, my chord, I can go between the different voicings. So let's go to the, the D6 chord again. Watch what happens when I go up the octave. We get the next voicing of that same chord. Another voicing and another voicing, and one more. So we get six totally different voicings that kind of run up the range of this big band. So you can hear the trumpet going up, you can hear everybody kind of shifting their, uh, their position in the chord. So if you need uh, a sustained chord, you put the mod wheel down at the bottom. And if you need a staccato, you move up top. You could get really good at, you know, triggering the different chord qualities and playing all of your chords, but that's not how I usually end up working with this. And what I usually do is kind of figure out what chords I need, and then I'll try messing with the key switch after. If you put the mod wheel right in the middle, you get sustained and staccato. And the coolest part about this is you are going to find, especially if you don't know a lot about this music theory, you're going to find that you'll just end up trying some different chords out. You'll choose maybe some different chord qualities and you'll probably come up with some stuff that you'd never come up with if you weren't using a library like this. So it's not like using some sample where you have all these notes from a chord, but you have no idea what the notes are in the chord. So the coolest part about this is you could then deconstruct it and go, okay, which chord am I using? Okay, that's a, a D minor major seven. All right, well, you could go do a little bit of research and figure out what notes are in that chord and then work those in with the other instruments in your little arrangement. So let's listen to what I did with the big band chords here on this one. If I double click on it, we can listen to it and see exactly what I did. So what you're looking at down here is different key commands that are going to do different things. So this first one, this one right here is actually triggering the root note, so the B. And then this note right here is my first chord, which is a B diminished chord. And then this one is my next B diminished chord. And then this one way up here is my G7 with a 9 and a sharp 11 in there. I can very quickly go and try a different voicing of this chord just by clicking on it and shift arrow down. And now I hear a different voicing of that exact same chord. So I could try that one out and have a listen to that. Not quite as intense as the other one. And maybe if I go up another octave, maybe that's too intense just yet. Right? It's kind of got to save something, right? And then the same thing with this chord right here. If I took this one down the octave, not quite as exciting. Same chord, just a different voicing. Anyways, so that's how I went through and figured out the different chords. And then the next little part is, is a little bit faster and we've got some different chords that pop in here. So you punch in the root at the bottom, the next one's gonna choose the chord quality. So a major, minor, whatever, and then you just bump up it and down by octaves to try the different voicings out. So it looks more complicated than it actually is. And it just sounds so legit. So that's what I did for this one. And then I went on and had some more chords in there. So then the next thing I did was add these trombone chords. So let's have a listen to them. And you know, all I had to do with this one is just copy the exact same part down and got the, the trombone ensemble chords. So have a listen to those. So rich and, you know, I, I could not achieve this with other libraries. For this little trumpet thing, I think what happened is I worked on this trumpet long patch for a little while and then realized I needed some staccato stuff. So I just made a, a totally separate track with that different articulation on it. This trumpet comes from the String War Library as well. So we got the legato patch loaded up. Sometimes I just do that. If I, if I know it's not too complicated, I won't bother with a patch that has multiple articulations. I'll just load up one articulation and then switch to the other patch for a few notes. And that's exactly what I did here.
I got that pan the wrong way. Ah, well, just don't tell anyone. So I've got the trumpet long articulation here from Swing Moore. Next, we've got the tenor sax and the alto and the berry. Let's have a listen to those three together. <laughs> So those ones are adding now to the chords that I got inspired to use from the uh, big band chords up here. Very convincing. I'm so impressed with this entire library, including the single articulations. So before I move on to other software, I'll just show you what else comes in this Swing More library. If I go over to instruments here, go up to the top menu, you can see the big band chords we already saw. We've got the brass articulations, bass trombone, tenor trombone, trumpets and octaves, and then trumpets. We've got some guitars in there, banjo, guitar, percussion. We've got some drums in there, and the drums are great too. Maybe I'll show those in another video, and I'll show you what I'm using for drums in this one in a moment. Next, we've got a piano, all the saxes and clarinet that uh, the saxes that I've shown you already. We've got some strings in there too. And you know what? I need to dig into those because I've never used those ones. And for this one, I used something else, which we will look at right now. And all I needed were a few string effects. And so for this one, I used Noir, Sonokinetic Library. It is just fantastic, but it's got a lot of that retro uh, vibe that I dig so much. If you just listen to a few of these articulations, straight out of an Alfred Hitchcock movie. So these libraries are fascinating. I've got a whole video on Noir, put a link to that in the description, and just incredibly expressive, beautiful patches. And you can choose the key that they're in. You can change the tempo of your project and it'll change with it. And I can't say enough good things about this library, but I've used Noir on, on my song with Olivia. So go check out that song, kind of a hip hop song. And uh, I use these strings on that song and they just sound so good in that genre as well. So anyways, here's the strings. And then I think I've got one more little string run that I also got from Noir. Next, we've got another one of my favorite libraries, Vienna Instruments. Been using their stuff forever. I did a ton of music for children's animations. And if you ever learn English as a second language as a kid, you might have heard some of my music. I know I'm, I'm huge in Japan. Actually, I started in Japan and then it spread all over the world. So anyways, I did a ton of children's music and I used the Vienna Instruments orchestra stuff almost exclusively during that time. Just fantastic stuff. I love their vibes. So that's what I used on this one. Fantastic recorded instruments and their string stuff the thing I love about it so much is for things like children's music, it was just so clean. And with children's music, I don't need a huge hall or something like that. So I would often just use their instruments, their smaller ensemble stuff and got a fantastic sound. So anyways, that's what my vibes is in here. Here's the vibes. Kind of that game show thing happening and attributed mostly to the vibes on this song. I think for sure it's kind of essential. The bass I'm using in this one, another one that I absolutely adore, Spectrosonics Trillion. I think I bought this right when it first came out, so I've had it forever. One of the best bass libraries ever made. So we've even got like those falls and stuff like that happening in there, which just add, the, add to the realism. And that fall happens right at this moment of the trumpet doing its little thing. So anyways, we'll listen to the whole thing in a moment. Next, I've got some crate cut stuff coming in because if you didn't get it, the beats and chats things, boots and cats, right? I know it should be called chats and beats because we usually start with chatting and then make a beat, but chats and beats and chats and beats just doesn't have the, the right ring to it. So hope you guys are cool with that. 
Beats and Chats it is, but we got to put some beats in there and that's where uh, the Crate Cut stuff comes in in the, in the second half. And then we've got some stylus drums. Now I've been using stylus for a long time and it still just works so, so extremely well. These ones are drums on demand. I use them in a million different little pieces of music. Just fantastic stuff. The way these ones work is they're just a whole bunch of little Rex files. It actually isn't that complex. I've been using this stuff for so long. So I've got fills, Rex loops that come in and then switch. So there's a really funky little drum fill that I had to drop in because my wife needed a few extra beats in the video to, to make this whole thing work. So she does all the video editing and all the fancy graphics and stuff. And then I take that and put my music to it. But sometimes as a composer, you're like, I'd love it if this bar just worked out perfectly, but it didn't. So you can see up here, I've got a bar of two, four just to add time. And then at the end, I needed to do something funky to make it work. So, you know, I got this drum fill that, that takes the place. And so when you're listening to it as a viewer, most people would never go, oh, that's really awkward. There's like a bar of two right there. But as a composer, you get to do this kind of stuff to push and pull tempo. And I've got videos on pushing and pulling tempo in Cubase, which is very easy to do with video and it's essential for my workflow. So next I've got a little glockenspiel sample and then the rest is all the vocals. And I was gonna have my friend Toby who I've had on a video, a Reason video in the past. She's an incredible singer and incredible jazz musician, taught me pretty much everything I know, but she couldn't do it. She couldn't sing on this one in this case. And so I got my wife to do it. So tracked her a whole bunch of times. She might get mad at me if I solo this, but let's just do it anyways. Beats and chats. So a nice thick chord. I've got some sound effects in there as well. So some crowds cheering and some whooshes and stuff like that. Better turn those on as well. Here we go. With your host, Jeff Gibbons. <laughs> the show where we really get to know your favorite creators and make some music together. Today's show featuring YouTube and TikTok beat making sensation, Knox Square. There we go, we got the bass fall off at the end. And then of course I have to mention that Knox Square does the Beats and Chats voice tag. And we talk about his voice tag business, but he does the, the Beats and Chats voice tag at the end of, of every Beats and Chats show. Just couldn't be more happy to have him in there and be a part of this little piece of music as well. So that is making a retro big band style theme using a whole bunch of different virtual instruments, really fantastic stuff. And it's when you start putting stuff together like this that it gets really exciting. You start to realize how incredible this technology is and what you can do with it. I'm so impressed with this Swing More library, so make sure you check that out. I'll put a link in the description for them. Let me know what you want to see in the description. If there's stuff that I'm showing you here or maybe just kind of scratching the surface of, I'll be doing some small jazz combo stuff in the future. I'm composing a bunch of tunes for that and arranging them right now and using all sorts of different software for that as well. So fun stuff, always having fun. Thanks so much for watching the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell. And we'll see you in the next video.